scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. I mean, someone must refuse and say, I, I am part of this vision and I know what Jubilee means. Lord, I take advantage of your grace and I take advantage of the prophetic season that I am in as a bona fide covenant beneficiary of this grace. Hallelujah. That when you are in that season of Jubilee, you can say, Lord, I advocate my exodus from shame, from reproach, from causes, from activities that are connected to ancestry. If my biological father is dead, the one God has given me in the spirit is alive. And Lord, it will still suffice as far as my liberty is concerned. He said, who seen that this man was born blind? Him or his father? Hallelujah. There are not many 50 years in a man's lifetime. So this 50 years, the next time it will happen again is 50 years. You see, new year happens every year. But Jubilee happens sometimes in a man's entire lifetime once. In modern history, we do not know anybody who has celebrated more than three Jubilees. So this is a very prophetic, defining moment. Hallelujah. When I came into the office and I saw this great father standing no stick no bending no it looked as if if we ran he will even outrun me i thought to myself even though i came to preach this jubilee is not for word of life alone this jubilee is for any wise person who understands that when your heart is open you can receive hallelujah oh i came with my own token of honor too not to be, I, I'm too young to waste my time. Whatever grace. I know people who are 40 and cannot stand strong. They can't climb a staircase. Three and, and they are breathing as if they dug a well. The grace for long life and health that God has placed upon the angel of this house. I stand in agreement with that grace word of life hear me in the name of Jesus from today let there be no infant of days again let there be no infant of days again are you ready to pray now in one minute before I give you some prayer points I want you to look at this vessel of glory this man of God, this father, spiritually and biologically, everything you have seen God do in his life for these 50 years, open up your heart and begin to receive by faith. Go ahead and pray. Lord, you have granted him speed. I receive it. Come on, are there people that pray here? Health and longevity. I receive it in the name of Jesus. Strength, global visibility, 
Hala Shabakato Soto Pregate. Hallelujah. Now, let me wrap up. Please hear me. Let me quickly give you three keys. There are three keys that help people maximize seasons, especially prophetic seasons like Jubilee. I will run through them. Number one is called discernment. Discernment is the faculty of spiritual perception. The ability to perceive men for what they stand for spiritually. When Elijah was going to go, Elisha told him, I desire a double portion of your anointing. He said, if you can see me, was he not looking at him? He that receives a prophet as touching the office, you can receive a prophet in the name of your brother. What you will receive is information about the family welfare. That's a brother's reward. Please listen. Discernment. The Lord was in this place and I knew not. Discernment. Discernment. Two men were going to Emmaus and the resurrected Christ was in their midst. But because they lack discernment, proximity does not just mean you will be blessed. It takes discernment. They were with Jesus and yet it had no effect on them. The Bible says they sat at table when he broke the bread. Their eyes were opened and he vanished. He didn't have the time again to talk with them. A season of discussion, they probably would have become apostles too like Paul. If they maximize that time. But time was going and their eyes were closed. Discernment. The miracle of open eyes is a real miracle. Then open he their understanding that they might understand scripture. Hallelujah. Listen, if your eyes is closed, you can stand near breakthrough. You can stand near anointed people and never have the eyes that see. The Bible says in Sodom and Gomorrah, are we still together now? We're about to pray that in Sodom and Gomorrah, when the angels came to the house of Lot, the men here wanted to sodomize the angels and Lot was even willing to give his daughters. And the Bible says the people refused, they were hesitant. And what happened was that the angels drew Lot in and struck them with blindness. And the Bible says they wearied themselves in front of the door. In front of where? In front of an opportunity, in front of an anointing, in front of a season. But because your hand can be well, if your eyes is closed, you will weary yourself. Someone needs to pray. This man I'm always calling my father. This woman I'm always calling my mother. This one I'm always calling my elder brother. This one I'm always calling a CEO. Who is he in the spirit? What grace was upon this woman that even though she did not go to school, she raised eight children without begging. That is more than hard work. There is an anointing behind the frail, uneducated woman. If all you are seeing is just mama who can set firewood, you will not receive anything. But the day you look at someone who is captain over many, a woman who did not go to school and raise children and the least of them is a noble personality there is a grace you need to start seeing men for what they stand for in the spirit he said no we no man after the flesh is someone learning so number one discernment number two the obedience of faith seasons will always demand that you take action seasons will always demand that you take action the awareness of the seasons alone does not bring you breakthrough the man in john 5 knew the season but he did not have the grace nor the skill to take the action while i am trying i made efforts mm. this is where wisdom is profitable to direct because when the axe head is blunt there will be efforts but there will be wastage you need the grace and the wisdom that directs the action 
for someone there is a season where god tells you go and register that company fast there is an unusual grace nationally territorially and spiritually there is a vista that has been opened for certain things there are certain people when a season opens for you you should go into fasting and prayer immediately because there is a grace that god is releasing it's like an unusual portal if you were not in the upper room on the day of pentecost even if you went to ease yourself that is it because the, 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 it came on only those who were there if you had attended the lecture for long and you say listen let me run and go and greet my mother you will return back and find out the holy ghost god loves everybody but he visited those who were waiting in the room when you discern seasons it's a call for responsibility for someone you are in a season right now where you have an opportunity to establish strategic relationships because according to the law of seasons rainy season always comes with a letter from dry season i am coming dry season always comes with a letter from rainy season don't just enjoy rainy season read the letter that it came with every season comes with a letter from another season coming this was the mystery of pharaoh's dream it says five um, um, uh, 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 the, the seven seven fatted calves and then the lean ones ate them twice and Joseph said it's the same thing God is showing you a modus operandi that cannot change for these seven years now make max for someone God is giving you this window of opportunity stop living a fake life maximize build relationships build capacity because there is something called your season of appearing and John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing. Man of God, now that nobody has identified your grace yet, now that nobody is placing a demand on you, don't go around saying, invite me. Prepare for the seasons so that when the time comes, you, you have, would have built stamina to survive the demand. Because if you fail in the day of battle, if you turn aside, the diagnosis is that your strength is small number three the third way we maximize seasons is through the mystery of sacrifice please listen listen sacrifice is not all about money in fact sacrifice is not even about anything material it's a spiritual transaction so when i say sacrifice don't just shut your mind to think you are talking of money money is the least expression of sacrifice the first sacrifice is you please listen carefully sacrifice the bible says gather unto me my saints psalm 50 and verse 5 they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice when Baal refused to answer and the prophets of Baal exhausted all their skill and their option, the last key to provoke the realm of the spirit in their thoughts and imagination was to lacerate themselves. They started by lacerating the animals. It did not work. They came to themselves. There is something called a living sacrifice. He said, I beseech you, brethren, Romans 12 and verse 1, that you offer your bodies unto God a living sacrifice. He calls it holy and acceptable unto God. And the Bible says it is your reasonable worship or act of service. And then verse 2 says, do not be conformed to this world. Is the Greek word aeon. It says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may be able to prove that which that good, acceptable and perfect will of God. Paul said, let no man trouble me. I bear upon my body. It is not only the anointing that is on me. There is a scar that is a testament that I stretch myself to maximize seasons. There are times where you pray like never before. There are times you fast like never before. There are times that you give like never before. There are times you serve like never before. Seasons. Word of life, hear me. When a visitation came to the house of Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, I hope you know that was the foundation of the experience of the Gentiles into the faith. From chapter 1 of Acts to chapter 9, no Gentile 
had the privilege of partaking of that life because salvation was for the Jews first. Let me show you somebody who pulled the testimony of salvation from the Jews to reach the Gentiles. When Peter came to the house of Cornelius, the angel appeared to Cornelius and he said two things. There were two things that made this possible. One, your prayer. Two, your arms. This is what brought me. Sacrifice is never complete. There is a difference between giving and sacrifice. The difference is that it will cost you. I will not give unto God anything. People have abused the issue of sacrifice. Once you hear sacrifice, people just think you can give a lot of money and not give sacrifice. Because it's not about money. God is not a politician. God is not a, I mean, he's a God of heaven. You can carry money and drop it and the realm of the spirit says nonsense because if there is a vetting system in the realm of the spirit before a man's giving is approved the macedonian church first gave on themselves before their substance is someone hearing now but let me tell you sincerely even god as powerful as god is he did not change the season of sin and the dominion of sin over man by casting it God did not cast sin out of man, even though he was the creator of the heavens and the earth. He did not send angel Michael. He didn't send Gabriel. He didn't send the four living creatures. When it was time for him to take the issue of the destiny of man serious, he sent his son. He's only begotten at that point. John chapter 3, this was Jesus himself teaching Nicodemus the dynamics of the kingdom. He came to him by night. The Bible says Nicodemus came to him by night and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. For no man can do these miracles except God be with him. And that began the discussion that led to chapter 16. For God so loved the world that he gave. God so loved the world. He knew that there was a season, an opportune time. And he gave Jesus. When Jesus was at Gethsemane, he was almost tempted to renegotiate salvation. Can you take this cup off me? But God was determined to see that men are saved. If you use 1,000 naira to buy a drink, it means you value that drink more than the 1,000. That's why you are able to part with it. So the, the apostle said, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us because he conferred us, he brought us as many sons. Today, Jesus is not the only begotten of the Father. He is the firstborn among we, the begotten. Because of sacrifice. Please hear me. Please hear me. I'm wrapping up now. Whether it is Satan you serve or Jesus you serve, you will always walk with the law of sacrifice. If you choose and donate yourself to the devil, the first thing he will demand of you is sacrifice you choose to serve a herbalist the first thing he would demand is sacrifice you come to god it is in the matter of sacrifice that both god and satan agree that it is a law escaping sacrifice using the guise of christianity is a joke let me tell you sincerely and i submit to you there are dimensions you will never step into until you understand the mystery of sacrifice i wish i had time i would have told you my stories don't think people just come out of nowhere that that is a joke the realm of the spirit is so strict in its operation you cannot bribe your way through mm -mm. ask cain and abel they, you, you you can't manipulate your way through he suffered no man to do them wrong he reproved kings for their sake. You know why? Because there is blood dripping upon their altar. When a, a death sentence came by a genuine prophet in chapter 38 of Isaiah to Hezekiah, he said, okay, I respect your ministry. I can't doubt you. You have a credible voice, but leave me and God. He turned his face to the wall. He didn't say, God, add yes. He said, remember. When did you change, oh God? When have you started ignoring sacrifices? Have you forgotten? I tell you the truth there are men who are standing today upon the sacrifices of many years they have built it has risen as a memorial in the realm of the spirit yes sir when Cain killed Abel 
he thought everything was all right the blood of abel went to the altar in heaven and started crying and god had that voice there are people you cannot touch the blood upon their altar has a potent voice no enchantment and no divination against them can stand hallelujah please rise up on your feet your day of visitation your day of visitation your day of visitation the bible says in hebrews chapter 4 help that lady please he said they heard the word just like we did but it did not profit them not being mixed with faith in fact the bible says it this way there remained a rest there is a sabbath for the people of god he says that if they had received the sabbath he would no longer talk about it that means every year kept proposing a sabbath god was saying you can step into certain levels of rest for someone here maybe you were in this convention last year and god gave you an opportunity but you were not discerning to step into your rest now god has granted another opportunity again maybe a man of god according to god's schedule you were supposed to have contacted an anointing last year and by now your ministry should have scaled heights but you did not discern i pray that like jacob you will not waste this second time jacob wasted it in chapter 28 and chapter 32 he was strong enough to say i'm not leaving you we are going to pray just one minute and then i'm going to respectfully plead with our father to come and stand in his capacity and declare because jubilee you see is a feast that goes with trumpets the assignment of a trumpet is to announce an end of a season and to open another the ram's horn was a mystery shofar even the return of christ will be by the trumpet the blast of the trumpet of an archangel the feast of trumpets is a mystery sorry we may not have the time tonight but let's pray is someone ready to pray prayer point number one say father one more time louder say father in the name of jesus i decree and declare release discernment upon my life open my eyes to discern and maximize seasons go ahead and begin to pray open my eyes someone pray someone pray season the miracle of open eyes the miracle of discernment in jesus name we pray in jesus name we pray prayer point number two i'd like you to pray the grace to take prompt action the bible says when the lord came to abraham in genesis 22 it says abraham take down thy son thy only son whom thou lovest and take upon a mountain that i will show you the bible says abraham arose early obedience is time dependent you are going to pray for grace to take the necessary actions promptly are we together it takes grace to take action on time say father in the name of jesus, name of jesus I, receive I receive empowerment to act in obedience, to act in obedience. lift your voice and pray father, the grace for obedience obedience, obedience in prayer obedience in fasting obedience in keeping to the terms of scripture the obedience of faith hallelujah hallelujah he said now that you know these things happy are you if you do them it is not knowing that brings you results 
it is the grace to engage the truths that you know the last prayer point you're going to pray and say father grant me the grace to make the requisite level of sacrifice in this season that will shift me to step into the blessings of jubilee lift your voice and begin to pray the grace My father the grace the grace, the grace for sacrifice in the name of jesus hear me for some of you the sacrifice that god is demanding from you right now is extended periods of intense consecration and prayer for some of you the sacrifice that god is demanding from you right now is the extended period of word study to camp with jesus till something falls upon your life for some of you the sacrifice god is demanding right now is a prophetic seed from you not something you reach down a pocket and remove as if you are bribing god something that there is a difference between ishmael and isaac when you give isaac you will know listen 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 i fear god and i love you too much i will not deceive you there is a place of commitment a sacrifice that touches the altar to say lord this is for my children ending i i wish i had time i would have shown you a king in the bible that during a time of war defeat was imminent already and he took his son and slew the son the first son the bible says an indignation rose against the people of god before god mm. there are seeds that can change seasons believe me there are some of you your church is not opening up stop roaming around and going on in circles and making all kinds of assumptions this grace bar if it is not there it is not there it's as simple as that there are people in business respectfully speaking you have tried and tried worry is a place a land of abundance you can be in a city yet spiritually the two lift gates have not been opened yes sir just because you are in a city does not mean the gates are open you can be in a city for many years i come from the north and when you pass many northern states there is what they call a city gate it's a prophetic thing even though most of it has a lot of witchcraft connotations until you pass that gate you are not yet in the city some of you have been in worry for 10 years 20 years but in the realm of the spirit you are still outside the city so the blessing and the riches from that city does not come to you because the bible says as for the earth out of it comes bread it says the increase of the the earth is for all where is your portion because god is a god of portions you need to provoke certain seasons sacrifice works on the law of death and resurrection god himself used that because except a corn of wheat falls to the ground, it abides alone. For someone God is speaking to you, you need to sit with your wife, sit with your company, and say, what is the jubilee sacrifice that I have to bring before the Lord? If you don't believe it, don't do it. The, I told you, sacrifice is not all about money. Remember what I said? There are many people giving God money and God is saying, it's you I want. Keep your money first. You can bring money and come and drop it. You are just doing politics. God wants your heart first. There is something called an acceptable worship. Your heart and then your giving. But by all means, don't give God your heart alone. That sacrifice, it is true. We are going to pray. I pray over you in the name of Jesus I stand upon this grace before I request our father to come and make a jubilee prophetic declaration here at this session but I stand under the corporate anointing of every man 
of God, woman of God here represented, word of life, and all who are connected, all who are following by a live broadcast or a rebroadcast, in the name of Jesus, here in this season of Jubilee, I sound a shofar in the realm of the spirit, and I declare, let it be a season of exodus from every calamity. Everything that represents shame, reproach, delay, retrogression, ichabod, that proverb that has been used over you, in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare seasons change. Seasons change. Seasons change. Hallelujah. Genesis, help that woman please. Genesis chapter 24 or 21 from verse 1. The Bible says, And God visited Sarah as he had said, and God did unto Sarah as he had spoken. God only does what he has said. He does not do what you want. He does what you want that is consistent with what he has said. The assignment of God's power is to look for what God has said. The power of God has no ministry until it finds what God has said. The anointing is the validator of the speakings of God. So if God has not spoken, the anointing can be dormant. I prophesied as I was commanded. He said, and there was a sound. Let me speak over someone. Whether in your ministry, whether in your business, this jubilee anointing, I declare, let it rest on the works of your hands. Let it rest on your family. Let it rest on your children. In the name of Jesus, I declare rest round about. Rest round about. Rest round about. Hallelujah. I prophesied Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 to 12. Over your life, you are blessed in the city. You are blessed in the country. In the name of Jesus Christ, I prophesy Psalm 112 over your life. He said, blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. He said, his seed shall be mighty upon earth. I prophesy that your seed is mighty. He said, the generations of the upright shall be blessed. May your children and your children's children be blessed. He says, wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endureth forever. The memorial of your impact will not be eroded. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now please hear me. My time is up. But I have to do this. I'm bound by my covenant of loyalty to the cross. To ensure that I make a call. Even if it is one call. My apologies. Please let me just a minute. It is impossible that in a gathering like this, there would be not one person who needs to be saved. The Bible says, and the Lord added daily, not as many as should serve, as many as should be saved first. Hallelujah. There are people here who are saying, I came for this Jubilee conference and while hearing you speak, truly, if I'm to be honest, if I'm to be sincere, my ways have not been right with God. There are others who are saying, I have never truly made this commitment unto Jesus. I have come to church. I come to church. I am sincere. There are yet others who are saying, Apostle, I remember giving my life to Jesus, but as it is right now, I cannot say I am a child of God. The church is not a cinema center. The church is not just a place of entertainment. Believe me when I tell you no matter what we do if we ignore the salvation of the souls of men then it is incomplete i want to make an altar call right now i'm going to count one to five above me uh, below me here and those who are falling online the overflows outside i'm going to count one to five you are saying apostle i need jesus now and there is nothing to be ashamed of as i count one to five i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and i want you to come and just kneel 
at the altar or stand there if you can at the count of five i will pray win that war of destiny right now and don't wait for anyone to be the first don't say i'm waiting to see who comes it's, this is a personal affair i begin my counting now run to jesus one okay those who are in the gallery there's a request that you just stand right in front of me here so that you are not able to go you're not uh, create any disruption please come those in front just come right here i'm going to see you god bless you word of life is this how you celebrate salvation god bless you god bless you god bless you come no eye has seen no ear has heard what god has prepared for me so i submit to your work in me till christ is formed in me no eye has seen no ear has heard what god has prepared for me so i submit to your work in me till christ is formed in me i want you to lift your right hand for all of you who are standing i see you we see you and those who are uh, by the altar please lift your right hand as a sign of surrender to jesus and i'm speaking to someone right now who may be following from across the globe maybe europe america asia africa some state here in nigeria or probably you are listening to a rebroadcast here is an opportunity to make it right with jesus hallelujah he said good master what must i do to inherit eternal life there is always something your participatory role that you have to play for eternal life to be yours lift your right hand i want you to say this after me loud and clear say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i believe that you love me i believe that you died for me i believe that you rose again for my justification right now i declare that jesus is my savior i declare that jesus is my lord and i declare that jesus is my king from tonight eternal life is in my spirit i declare that i go from glory to glory and from grace to grace i am a child of god amen father thank you for these ones you have brought them by your spirit the bible says as many who will come to you you will in no wise cast away these ones have come declaring their faith in jesus and by the authority of scripture i declare your sins forgiven i call you the righteousness of god in christ jesus I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over your life. From tonight until forever, you walk in the newness of life. You are saved. You are born again to the glory of God the Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, some cards have been given to you. Congratulations. I want you to follow the directive. Now, all of you um please listen listen very carefully you will be directed by an official right now officials please can you wave your hands so that they see you okay i'm told that those upstairs just move to the back someone will be directing you and someone will be there please all of you together let's celebrate them as they go and all who are by the altar just follow the officials and they will direct you in the name of jesus i want you to stand i I said i was going to make a request to ask our father to just come in this session i know that he has spoken over you he speaks over you every day but this is a prophetic word of release i know that you have listened to this man for some of you for decades but i want you to listen tonight with your heart open and with a renewed grace to receive i'm ready to receive myself because i know it's a new season and while he does that i want to say thank you thank you for the opportunity to have been a blessing and it will be for you from glory to glory in the name of Jesus. Can we invite our Father, God's General? Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. 
Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our home page for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.